first call of the night, we got um, D is the name here calling in from Scotland. D, you are live on Truth Wanted. What's up? Wait, are you talking to Scotland or B? Oh, I see D up there. Is your name Scotland? I'm sorry. I must have uh, yeah, must have gotten my confused name is on Scotland. that. Okay, Scotland. Scotland. Oh, I see. I see. I was reading our call screen wrong. It's Scotland calling in from New York. There, there's some other information on here that I got confused. Scotland, thanks so much for calling. What's going on? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Objectively, Dan and Kelly. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight, first of all? Man, let me tell you, this, this news week keeps getting crazier. Oh. Like two hours ago, three hours ago, like it, the Department of Justice is like investigating the Southern Baptist Convention, I think, for like 20 years of like a sex crime cover up. So that's really? something I got to look into. Yeah, you know, it's a crazy week for news. Crazy week. And Salman Rushdie got attacked today. Yeah, Salman Rushdie got stabbed. What? What's going yes. on? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's wild. Yeah. It's wild. Wow. Anyway, uh, share with me how I put the order of my topics um, in the call screen. Because that's kind of the order that I'd like to go in. Or if you wanted to go... Pick one out of imp out of interest. That'd be cool too. Um, you know, I see that you wanted to talk about. So, so this is what I have listed here: the natural cycle of the rebirth of the cosmos, the natural mm -hmm. reincarnation, and how the multiverse theory may help disprove God. I guess that's the one that's most interesting to me. How does the multiverse theory disprove God? Well, if there is a multiplicity of universes and dimensions or extra dimensional dimensions or whatever, however you want to say it, perhaps in, you know, in voidless spaces of space time, um, perhaps a big bang, natural occurring big bangs are common occurrence and the thing that just create other universes in other realms of voidless space time. So, I mean, if it's that, I mean, it's that if it's occurring commonly and that, that naturally, depending on, we don't know what rate the other dimensions are created. I mean, who knows? We don't know much about it. It's only at this point a theory. But I mean, I, it but could be like, what if common. what if I just said, but Scott, what if I just said God exists outside of the observable multiverse? Right. I know that's what that was. What that was my initial thought when I came up with this theory. I was like. This, the catch of it, this, the cinch of it is, well, God it exists outside of the, the, the multiverse and created the multiverse just like as just another facet, more facets to the wonderful watch he's created as this awe-inspiring watchmaker or artist, you know? Yeah. But do we really... So, uh, are, that was a really... You're an atheist, Dan. That was a really agnostic mm -hmm. question. That was well, I'm just really saying... I'm I'm I, I have to I have to argue for fairness, right? I yeah, I'm an atheist, <laughs> but I wanted this show's truth wanted. This ain't the atheist experience. I want to know what's really true. And if somebody can propose to me a model of the universe that makes the most sense with a god existing in it, then I want to know uh, if that's true. Now, obviously, I don't believe that's out there. Um, but right. like, I don't know. It seems like you know you can still argue and say God exists outside of the universe. And God can exist outside the multiverse, and that kind of leads to the same, obviously the same kinds of problems. But you can still kind of make that argument, I guess. I don't know how that be too different. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was wondering how, I, I was wondering how you were so convinced that we are actually existing in a multiverse. I'm not yeah, necessarily too, convinced of it, which is, I'm not necessarily convinced of it. Which is why I said the theory of the multiverse may bolster to prove to disprove God. Well, I would just like I would like to see I would like to see the multiverse theory proved in my lifetime, just because I think it's friggin' that cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, like, you know. So I guess the response to my own question would be like, I don't know what observable qualities would make a God a thing in the first place. Like, if he doesn't exist within the universe, then he's literally outside of the purview of science. And to me, that means that he's unknowable in some sense. Now, when we talk about the Christian God, of course, he has existed 
like within the universe. Like he's, if, if you follow those stories and you take a literal interpretation, like he literally walked on earth and I'm not talking about Jesus, right. like God himself in the old Testament has walked on earth and Jesus, yeah. um, and all the, you know, heavenly holies or whatever. But, you know, Christians will often say, well, but we don't have to go that far. We just can talk about this sort of theistic concept of God. Can we at least get to this philosophical argument that maybe lends credence to this idea that something, you know, has to exist in or, you know, because there can't just be nothing and all this stuff. And, and, that, and that's where one, I think it's disingenuous, but also I still find it problematic because it's just kind of a philosophical pandering almost. I mean, you could argue that maybe right. anything exists. It doesn't really well, convince me that that thing is more true than anything else, right? Go ahead, Scott. Well, can, I, Scott. can I tell you why I believe in God? Why do you believe yeah, in God, the, Scotland? I believe in God, not necessarily because there's any evidence or proof of God's existence, but rather for the romance sake of it all, for the story of it all, for the tale, mm -hmm. or... Um, because it it's like another spice in the cabinet, you know what I mean? There's so mm -hmm. many religions to choose from. You can mix, you can max, you can cherry pick, you can you know whatever you want to do, you can do it. It's just another sure. spice sure. in the cabinet. Sure. So sure. flavor of life. That would, but using that logic, wouldn't I be justified in believing in uh, say Iru 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 from the Silmarillion? Why not? He could exist. Why not? But mm. why? Why doesn't he? I, I just, I, I am just and wondering he, why I would want to put can? my, why would I want to put put my belief into something that I didn't, I couldn't prove was true. I mean, I would, I might be putting all my energy into believing something that's not true. So why would I want to do that? So how could I tell the difference? Well, for me, I think that's an unfair question because for me, it all it all lays in romance and hope. You know, I I, I would like to live forever. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to live forever in a place with no pain, no suffering, no death. You know, always yeah, light, mm -hmm. never dark. But you, you know, know and I it, think it's... I think that's the fantasy, that's the fantasy that religion offers you. And those, you know, I, why would you, why would you take from me, from the, I mean, from the, in, on my deathbed, what are my dying thoughts going to be? Where am I going to be looking to? If I'm okay, coherent well, the, enough. I, I can answer that. You know? And there, you know, I, I respect, I, Skyland, I respect the hustle. I respect the hustle and saying, yeah, I don't know if this shit is true or not. I just like it. You know what? That's a vibe. I, I, I'll, I'll meet you there. Okay. That's a post truth, cool. post modern idea of truth. And, and you know what? There's some people who are perfectly acceptant of that and they live their lives how they see fit. And if you can make that work, that's great. I can't make that work for myself. Um, and I wouldn't wish it upon others for a few reasons. One of them being for every person that has the panacea belief that I'm going to go to heaven after this. My life has an ultimate meaning. There's a creator that has a plan for me. There's another person that says, yeah, I have a plan and, and God gave it to me. And he says that I should make sure that gay people know that they're living a life of sin and shouldn't have the same rights as me. You see what I'm saying? Right. Th these yeah. ideologies come from the same place. They come from wishful right. thinking. And that harms people, right? Yeah. Ultimately, there's measurable harm that can be demonstrated from that. So uh, while on the same token, it could be great for people's lives and an inspiration for them to honestly live their best lives. It can also be the fuel for an ideology that's not only totalitarian, totalitarian in nature in some cases, but also just epically ruins the potential of human lives, right? Like I bet one of your favorite songs, Dan, is John Lennon. Uh, imagine, isn't it? That's one of your favorite I mean, songs, right? That's like the, you know, no, I, I, because I, the thing about John Lennon is like he had this great, you know, kind of cool liberal, what if heaven wasn't real and stuff, but he was like a piece of shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he, he took his non specific ties to an ideology to kind of do whatever he wanted. I, I, wow. I wouldn't even go so far. 
as to say that I, that I don't, that know, I, too, I don't know too much about John Lennon's, John Lennon's life, so I can't count. My personal opinion, I think he sucks. I think he actually represents the worst of what atheism can offer, which is a life of just doing whatever you want without consequences. Oh yeah, I I don't believe in that. I don't I don't think that's the best way you can live your life, and I don't think it's the way people should live their lives. I do believe in living a life of purpose. Yeah, go. What's that? I think yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, um, I drive with that, and I think that atheism has, as someone who believes or at least hopes that God exists and is good and just and not a tyrant like the book portrays him to be sometimes or most mm -hmm. of them, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I respect atheism and I see a lot of merit and value in atheistic ideals. And I value the, the, the stance, the stance on humanism, the atheist takes and humanitarianism. I appreciate all that. I think it has, a, yeah. I think atheism has a lot of value and a lot to offer the world. You know, okay. um, by better days, I'm an atheist. Okay. But if you're encountering somebody that is fundamentalist in nature and wants to talk about things, and, and, and this is a, a rising thing that's happening in this country, people who really want Christian nationalism to be the ruling ideology uh, for the American yeah. people, like, how do you counter that if, if you're saying that the place where they get their religion is the same place where you get your religion? Like, what basis do you have to tell them that they're wrong? You have nothing to fight with in that, right? Well, I, like that's, I do my... Kelly, Kelly, do you want to chime in here, too? Do you want to ask a question? Because I feel like you want to say something, too. No, I, I'm, I actually... I'm, that was, I thought Dan's question was a really good question. How do you, okay, how do you determine... Well, here, here's the answer, Dan. Here, you know, here's the answer. Mm -hmm. I, I'll give you mm -hmm. the best answer both. I can. Okay. I do my I best... Hear it. I do my best... I do my best to fight to combat fundamentalists with, because fundamentalists only answer like, they're like, the word says it, the Bible says it, I believe it, that settles it. Sure. You can't come at them, mm -hmm. you can't come at them with philosophy, you have to come at them with the Bible. So I come at them with the Bible the best way I can, and I fight, and, and when I talk, like, I've had so many Christians, like, shun me and abandon me, after they told me, after speaking to me so often, that it put them in such an utter state of confusion that they started to doubt their beliefs in God and, and their fundamental Christian beliefs because sure. they couldn't challenge me. Sure. sure. Okay. I mean, you sound like an atheist activist, Scotland. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like you sound like you're doing the work for us. And that's great. Look, I listen. An I, activist, trust me. Here's the thing, Scotland. I appreciate that you do that. I think that is the right thing to do. But I think the reason that I think it's the right thing to do is different from the reason that you might think it's the right thing to do. I, uh, ironically why, enough. Why do you think it's the, Why do you think it's the right thing to do? For the same. Well, actually, you know, I say it's different, but some of it's the same, right? It's like I also think um, that this this stuff is harmful, right? I also think that this stuff um, shouldn't be a thing, and, and it's not what I would want for the world, right? So I'm trying to also do my best with the, with the materials I can to try to change people's minds or, or do something equivalent to that and, and, and help people out. But, but the reason why I do it isn't because I think go, there's an ultimate God who loves us and who would want that for us, or there's a hope for me in the afterlife or a reward for being that. Like, like I, I don't need that to do what I do. If anything, I think those ideas limit human potential and limit how we can think about ourselves and our place in the universe. We don't have to, I don't, I don't think we have to be the subjects of a divine game of chess to make a difference. I, I don't think we have to be the subjects of a divine creator to have meaningful relationships with people or to live meaningful lives. That, I, Again, it, it limits human potential in a way. Like, yes, I think what you've described is perhaps the most benevolent form of religion, perhaps the one that uh, leads millions of people every day to lead their best lives. And, you know, we, we tend not to, like, touch those people as much in the atheist community, not literally touch, but like, you know, touch upon it because right. we care. That's, that's like asshole territory. To be honest, that's where it's like, Oh man, grandma, you shouldn't go to church and hang out with your friends because <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that's right. sort of an organization. Yeah. That's that. But if the church is funding like, a, like gay therapy camps or whatever, like then it becomes wrong. You know what I mean? Like there, there is a line there that you can cross when yeah, you like, support institutionalized religion. Anyway, I'm talking a lot. 
And one oh, one thing God. you said, Scott, when that I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So go ahead, Kelly. Oh, one, well, one thing that you said that kind of stood out to me is that when you were talking about how these uh, fundamentalist Christians had one idea of what the Bible taught them, and that you all had a different idea. So how 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 do we justify that you came to two completely different conclusions from the same book? And mm. and how do we know which one? I mean, maybe those fundamentalists are the ones who are right. How do we know? Well, we better hope not, because if we are us three are shit out of luck, because it's a bad. That's person. not. Yeah, but I agree. I, but, I get that, but what I'm, I'm, what I'm wondering about is how can we tell? Yeah, how can we tell think, if you're right or if they're right? I think if if God is true. Oh no, Scotland, you cut out oh, oh, on no. our call. I hope you're still there. Uh, I'm going to put you in the queue for just a second. Um, and then hopefully uh, the crew can work with that. But um, I, I don't know if we'll continue that conversation because we've been talking for a while. But Kelly, I'll tell you this. This call has been one of my favorites in a long time. Not that I haven't <laughs> had great calls recently because I have had some great calls recently. But I like this. I like this because Scotland is completely honest in his interpretation of Christianity. He's like, look, mm -hmm. this is just my pan. He literally said it's his panacea, which is awesome. And it's like, hey, this is how I live my life. And this is what gives me hope. Because he has put into words what I think a lot of people would never admit out loud. And I, I respect that. I respect that. The difference I think that you and I have found is, well, if we can come to truth conclusions about this, what other kinds of truth conclusions can we come to? And how does that affect the way that we operate in the world? Right? Because if you're a Christian versus a hardcore um, Muslim, or a hardcore Buddhist, or a hardcore Scientologist, like how you interact with other people, how you live in society is dramatically affected by those ideologies should you live out their principles coherently. Um, so it's a fascinating thing to talk about. What do you think, Kelly? Yeah, I yeah, I it is a fascinating thing to talk about. And it, it I'm always uh, interested in how, how people do, like as we were talking about, come to different mm -hmm. conclusions with the same piece of information. And I always wonder if it's just a reflection on what they want to believe rather than what they should believe. Yeah, I don't know. Um it's it's gonna be different for everybody, right? Like I I, I definitely at the end of my christianity it started to feel more like wishful thinking like it started to feel like i was holding this together because i got something out of it it gave me a, a particular social life it gave me um a life meaning and a life purpose um and that's hard to come by when you're an atheist i'll be honest it's harder to do than it is when you're a part of religion that's not to say that people don't have it obviously they do but it doesn't come the same way you're not being you're not part of a community that's telling you every Sunday what your place here on earth is for, right? You kind of have to figure things out on your own and it's a struggle and it's hard. And, and sometimes the answers are, are all over the place and don't really make sense, but that's, I mean, I don't know, that's the human condition. I didn't, I didn't make it that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just try to do my best, but it looks like Scotland has dropped the call. Unfortunately, Scotland, that was a great call. 